Hello, this is Witch Nikki. And I've had a little bit of a cough and I haven't really been getting into my reading. Um, this is Witch Nikki uh, Talks. Um, it's not my stories. So if you don't want your children to listen to this, you can just turn it off right now because. I'm getting into the topic of wearing black <clears throat> and um, I have a lot of thoughts on that and uh, sorry, uh, I don't really have too much time to talk about it today. I talked about it yesterday and it didn't really go very well. Um, in 1850, Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote a book called The Scarlet Letter. And I kind of relate that scarlet letter wearing to what's going on today by groups of uh, actresses, mostly. And it's, it's kind of spilling over to other women who follow these actresses and... Um, so they're following this wearing black and I know it was a couple of days ago and is it over yet? I don't know. Um, I'm a purple wearer. I have a lot of purple, but my black shirts have, um, oh, I don't know what you call it, like logos or what, it, not really logos, but, um, you know, from shows that I watch and a lot of my shirts reflect who I am about being a witch and things like that. <clears throat> so I'm not really wearing black as you can see. I even have blue jeans on today. Um, I have a lot of thoughts on this and I don't think I have enough time in 30 minutes but I'm going to try. And um, number one, I have a problem with using one particular catchphrase or a color or a symbol to, to label yourself and draw out this epidemic that has been going on for centuries since the beginning of time since men have learned they have a and women have got a you know what I mean it's been going on for centuries it's not right and I do not support it because I am a survivor of many sexual attacks, harassments, rape, whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> years ago, I was in the industry of healthcare, and I was a back office assistant. And part of my job was following the doctor who hired me into all the examin rooms, go with him. And there was procedures being done for back surgery because he was a, a back surgeon. And so I'd have to record for him and be with him in case there was a female or whatever. And it was during the time, like in the late 80s, that uh, stuff like that was going on where it was dangerous to be a patient of either dentist or doctors. So this is not something that is just limited to the acting industry or the farming industry. It is a widespread epide epidemic. <clears throat> but why? Why is putting on a certain color going to help anything? like the scarlet letter, what's it, what's it doing? Is it calling attention to, hey, 
I've been sexually assaulted. Because you know what that does? It puts, I think, it puts on a target. Um, and you people can see a target even if you're just like all mm, mopey all the time. Uh, it has taken me years of all kinds of therapy. Not, and I don't mean just um, <clears throat> talking to a specialist in the in the field, but <laughs> um, group therapy, um, powwows, sweat lodges, uh, reiki, uh, all different kinds of forms of healing. <clears throat> Mostly I've had to kind of get to know myself again as being a survivor. Because I went, you go through stages. You're a victim and it hurts and you're, pain, you're just filled with pain and rage and anger. And then you, you go through that. And then you go through telling people about it. And then you go through collecting all the sympathy you can because it feels like the more sympathy you get the more people are acknowledging that you've gone through that and somehow it's going to make it all better or that you're giving out that information you're giving it away but actually you're not it's kind of like carrying around a backpack full of shit and sooner or later, people are going to ask you, what, what's that? Ugh, it's that terrible stench coming from your backpack. <clears throat> past. Past shit. That you've been collecting over all the years. And so is what my question is, is wearing black going to make us stronger or is it going to label us yet again as being the, the targeted one? Millions around the world of women who have been targeted and been victimized. And so now what? What are you all doing wearing black? Look at me. This is the time. It's past time. It's way past time. The first time it ever happened, which is not on any record that I know of because nobody was around to record such a thing. But the first time it was recorded, the first time it happened, that was, that should have been it. That should have been time. Hey, you don't do that to me. You don't touch me unless I, I ask you and I reciprocate and I want it. You don't touch me. You don't look at me like a uh, an object. Okay? We have to, yes, we have to voice that it's happened. Okay. But all the details, no. It happened to me in this, in the doctor industry. And... Here I am today going to going to a male doctor um, for just a regular checkup and to try to find out why I'm having so much pain going on. <clears throat> and so, so it is, you know, um, in our world, uh, the time is not just right now. It was a long time ago said it is time but when I went here's a, in brief as brief as I can get I worked in a doctor's office at the end of the day we spoke about all the things that happened in the office in the room and he let me know how I was doing because I was new there I had barely been there about a month so and he was like letting me do more and new things and um, expanding my knowledge and, uh, you know, uh, work. <laughs> and 
So I was in there, and he was telling me how, what a good, good, great job I was doing. Good, good job. And uh, then out of nowhere, he asked me, told me how beautiful I was. Yeah, I know, looking at me now, <laughs> some of you are going, what? Okay, well, he wanted me to remove some clothing and expose myself to him. And I said, no. And I took all the charts that I was supposed to work on and file and left the room. And the next day I came to work and I was spoken to by the office manager <clears throat> and one of the other doctors that owned the offices. There was two doctors and one doctor had never spoken to me. He did not hire me. The other doctor did. I worked for the other doctor. But this doctor, now it was his turn in the presence of the office manager who was a female to fire me. Why? Because they said that they um, were downsizing and I was one of the last ones to be hired, so I was one of the first to get <laughs> chopped. Okay? Funny that that came right after that incident. I think that doctor who had spoken inappropriately and asked me inappropriate things uh, got scared and nervous number one he had a wife at home who was pregnant the whole office knew about that and uh, number two he probably got scared that because I left the room like that I could turn around and call up attorneys or call up somebody or have him you know report him I did after they fired me because I just went into work and thought, hey, I got, you know, got to get to work. Found out, didn't have a job. So I did call an attorney to try to help me out with it. But they said, oh, it'll be your word against his, blah, blah, blah. You'll embarrass yourself because blah, blah, blah. All this stuff will be dr dragged out about you and so, you know, <clears throat> they just kind of waved it off like it wasn't going to be a good idea for me to participate in a lawsuit. So I just had to immediately go out and find something else, and I did. I worked for a female entrepreneur, and um, she had also it was a different kind of medical field but one that I could fit into um, she wasn't a doctor but she was a businesswoman and we got along very well and that job went very well for a while <clears throat> sorry anyways did I walk around wearing black or wearing a scarlet letter? No. But before I got that job with her, I tried several other doctor's offices. And most of the time I was so sorry, but we'll call you back at another time. Or sorry, but we've already filled every, every position, but we'll keep your your information on file and I just kept looking and looking and looking until finally I found this woman who was not in a doctor's office she provided care for children in the homes and she was starting out her business I was her first care provider in the business and um, she had several other ones that came very soon after me she was just like just starting it up <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> and so that went very well but I kind of feel like uh, when you're in an industry that's really tight and everybody a lot of people know each other doctors in an area and stuff like that somehow you get on like this 
black ball list or whatever it is and people sort of like back off from you I was never able to and never wanted to work in a doctor's office again I had worked in three and that was enough I don't like doctor's offices um, politics I don't like the way that they treat people I don't like I mean treat them <clears throat> they're always giving you a pill you got a cough <clears throat> you feel sad pill this pill that pill 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 until you are filled to the brim with pills and you still have not found they still have not found what it is that's causing whatever it is that's causing it and so I don't like that but I also just don't like a lot of doctor's office ethics because it's all about money 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 insurance insurance people who are covered with insurances really good insurances get the best treatment if you're on a government substantiated uh, medical insurance you are you're lucky if you leave there alive let me tell you I could tell you some haunting things but that's not what this is has been about what this is about really is the color black what is it going to do and why did they pick black could it be white could it be yellow could it be purple could it be orange could it be flowers or polka dots or stripes you know why a color number one because now Every time that I'm seeing black, I'm like, okay, that person has been sexually assaulted or was sexually assaulted. And I'm not saying it was a good, it's a good thing or a bad thing. That's what they're deciding to do. And I support a movement of some kind, but I really don't like taking color that some people don't see as being negative I see black as being as beautiful as white even more so you will hardly ever see me with anything white especially not a shirt not a dress not a skirt nothing I wore too much of it when I was in the doctoring field in the back office positions wearing white skirts and white tights and white dresses and white hats even back in those days <laughs> i just don't like it it just reminds me too much of those days back in the days now everything's more colorful but what i'm thinking is why mark yourself as having this problem what is it going to do? What are they really doing? Shouldn't they go out and mark the people that caused this, point to them, make a list of them that have done this sort of thing? I don't want to know every single woman out there or man that has been sexually harassed raped or whatever I don't need to know that I know that they're out there I can feel it everywhere I go if I even mention it oh so was I so was I hundreds of people hundreds of women mostly and men on some occasions have been sexually targeted uh, so you develop suddenly you're you're thrown into victim victimhood let's call it and then you have to grow up out of there and survive and become a survivor and what's after surviving thriving because you could survive it's like oh, i finally 
got out of the desert. I'm alive. Okay. But what are you doing? Are you just sitting around there and doing absolutely nothing? Or have you turned your life around to become a thriver? Someone who creates and continues to create good things in their life. Doing good for others in their life. Not just putting on a color and saying, I have been a victim long enough. Now I'm coming out. It's like they're all coming out <clears throat> of everywhere. And showing how many victims. Okay. Because we all got kind of shoved into the same closet, if you will. By other attorneys and other people, doctors, therapists, who just looked at us like, well, didn't you maybe provoke it? No, I didn't. I was wearing a white shirt completely, you know, and I had like maybe a little um, a dress top on. Uh, I don't know how to, to describe it, but it was kind of like not an apron, but... And it wasn't like, uh, I don't know, it was a bib overalls, but I'm in a skirt. So it had like a square. Anyways, it was not anywhere near attractive. And I've always worn my skirts at or below my knees. Always. I've never been a mini skirt type of a girl. It shouldn't be anything that we wear. Men wear stuff, and I don't go, oh, let's do it, baby, or nothing like that, you know. Uh, women are able, I think, more able to keep it in their pants than men are sometimes. And I know I'm going to get uh, attacked for that, but I don't mean everybody. I mean all the ones out there that do stuff. It just seems like it is a lot of men. If there's all these women coming out of the closets now saying, this has happened to me. Well, it's happened to me too. Well, it's happened to me too. It's happened to me too. It's like this snowball effect of all these women coming out now of and talking about it. So there had to have been men or women attacking them. And, and it happens. <clears throat> it's happened. But what are you going to do? Carry around that backpack with shit in it forever? No. But once you take off that backpack, what are you going to do? Toss it out completely. Let go of it. It's there. You remember having it. But it's no longer on your back and it's no longer being carried around with you so that it's smelling bad and everywhere you go, you're opening it up to shove it in people's face. That's not a survivor. That's a victim when you do that. That's something that I had to learn. I, I ran smack dab into the wall about it. And <clears throat> that's years ago. I have several attacks against me of sexual nature, ranging from the small little one, like stupid little jokes, guys asking me for my phone number before they even ask for my name, to being asked to remove some clothing, to sexual activities. Um, being pressured, um, rape. I've been through it all. All. Okay. And I'm not going to get into that wearing black crowd just because they're all saying, oh, we got to all stick together. Where were they? They weren't even born yet. Most of them weren't even born yet when it was happening to me. Or barely kids at that time. 
now they feel like they've made movies, they've made TV shows, they've made records, they've made songs, they've, you know, put it all out there. So they might as well tell the whole world what's happened to them. It's happened to me, but I'm going to go out there wearing it on my forehead or on my clothes or storming around with them and posting it everywhere. Yes, I'm going to talk about it if somebody wants to talk to me about it and they want to survive and then thrive. But I'm not going to hook up with all the victims because it will start pulling me back into the victim mode, you see. When you hang around with a lot of victims, you start feeling it again. They're all talking about it, reminiscing about it. Every single detail. It becomes, you're in a whirl, whirlwind of it. So that's one reason why I don't want to go to any kind of group therapy. And be with women who have just been attacked and assaulted. Because they will pull me down. And I've gone up. And up and up. And I don't need to be pulled down into it, into the muck. I don't need to be wearing black to show my support. I'll give a hug to anybody who's been there. But I'm not going to become a sponge absorbing it all. And then, you know, becoming reinfected with the shit that I was carrying in my backpack all those years and got rid of it. That's where I'm at right now. I went through victim, victimhood. I went through survivorhood. And now I am in thriver mode. Okay? I no longer cover up my pains with anything. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I don't do medicated drugs of any kind <clears throat> to help relieve <laughs> bullshit. Because that stuff does not relieve you of anything. You have to do it yourself. You have to be out and about you have to continue to create in your life and do things and be with your family, be with friends. Don't bring people down about it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. So do I support the wearing of black? Mm, not really. Uh, they want to do it. That's fine. I'm not saying stop doing it because I'm sure can't stop nobody from doing nothing. And, uh, I'm just going to go on from there. You know, uh, I am who I am. But don't think, oh my God, look at her. How come she's not supporting us? She's been there. Sorry, I'm not putting on the scarlet letter just because everybody else is. And that scarlet letter should have been put on the men. The men that caused such things to happen. And that story it was about an adulteress well was she adultering by herself no she was adultering with another person a man and did he put on a scarlet letter no did any of the men out there who's ruined half or more than half of hollywood stars actresses Models, farm workers, uh, and the list goes on. Any of those men out there wearing a, a black, black suits or stripes or anything to let us know who they are? Are they wearing a scarlet letter? No. We have to support each other no matter what color we're wearing. We have to uh, report things that do happen to us. And that's that. So 
This is Witch Nikki, and I will get back into storytelling in a few days. I have a few things to do around here. I keep saying that, but it's true. Never-ending story around this place. Always something to do. <clears throat> Love you all. Talk to you soon.